Good morning, everyone. I hope you had coffee or tea or whatever you wanted to have this morning. And as you've already seen, we ordered some uh, slight rain to keep you in the building. That's one. And because we thought, OK, after Mallorca last year, uh, you could do with some uh, differentiation and some other weather. So I think see it positively. And I think it's all over Europe, or most part over Europe, that we have this uh, gray, gray weather. But let's be bright inside. And I saw in the program that I got 30 minutes, but I'm not going to take 30 minutes. I'm going to give some more time to Herbert. And I will stick to 30 pictures. And 30 pictures, because I think you might have a question that when you are here uh, for a conference that has to do with uh, libraries, that you can think, don't you have a library where we can sit? I'm very sorry that to say that the Wi-Fi in the building is not the best Wi-Fi in the world. So one of the things I have to ask you is please don't look at streaming, because that makes it worse for your neighbor, and because it, it's going very, very slow. So take that uh, into account. And there is some other uh, secret that may be solved. If you have a card with your name on a name tag with a blue dot, I have one too, that means that this is your first ELOG conference. And that means that, well, other people who are, well, longer at ELOG conferences can take a bit care of you if you want to, of course. <laughs> and uh, Vila, I know there is a third message, but that will come later. Also, for the presentations and for Herbert's presentation and the others, uh, turn your mobile phones off if it's not turned off yet. So, pictures about the fact, the question you can have, don't you have a library? And I think the ALAC meeting before this one was at Prague at uh, Martin's uh, beautiful uh, concrete modern bright library and we have a concrete library too and if you want to visit it you will be able to do that but I will show you what's uh, happening with uh, the building look at this picture and see the, the block in fact the tower in the middle of the picture is uh, the book tower and is the library and we are somewhere here out of the picture, but around uh, this place there is water in between, and this is taken from the um, cathedral in the middle of the city, the one that's uh, getting more and more scaffolding at the moment, and it will disappear for years and years. The book tower is under complete uh, reconstruction, and it's getting more and more also an icon for uh, the university. It even has in the city museum and city museum some worth visiting if uh, you love to go to the museum. It's a very modern new museum and you see this is all in Lego bricks. So, and it's uh, as high as this. And there is a lot of Lego around, so if you want to have a try to make your own book tower, you can always go there and well, compete with the children who are trying to do it. And apart from the Lego uh, bricks, we also once had chocolate uh, with uh, Leonidas, with the, the birthday of, or the celebration of the, uh, of the country. You can see it at the back side with the book tower. And one of the reasons was that one of the most known monuments in Belgium is the Atomium in Brussels, the one with all the balls. But because there is a copyright on it, and you have to pay a lot for it, they did not want to put it on the box, so that's how the book tower got there. We also had um, a stamp. We got two, but the other one is not that beautiful, so I didn't take it here. There's a children's book on it. Google had in April, or we had the honor that Google uh, had the Google logo in April for one day, all with uh, Hori van der Walde, so the uh, architect of um, the library, and the L well, fitted so good for the book tower in it. And this is Potts. You will see more of the, uh, I think, the designs of uh, Pat Hochstenbach. This is how Potts sees the book tower. 
Aunt Herbert, do you remember this one? Herbert made this. I think it was somewhere back in the 90s. I scanned it yesterday, and it was a mouse pad. And you know that it's breaking to pieces when you touch it, because the plastic is going bit by bit. We have more than one left, fortunately. And this was also the start uh, page of our um, website with the uh, uh, executive lounge and the information desk to the right, remember? I couldn't find anymore um, the picture of the book tower with the Christmas lights around it. So otherwise we would have had that one too. But well, this was the bright book tower uh, that was built, um, well was finished with the Second World War. And this is how bright it was and how beautiful it was in um, well material that was chosen and also in composition and whatever. But you will see it when you visit it or you come closer to it that it's really looking shabby at the moment. We are moving, it's getting, t uh, well we have started the restoration and one of the things is that a book tower, I mean that Van der Walde was a bit uh, modern in his time, it's a completely uh, closed uh, rack system. So that means that no one gets into the tower. And we've been calculating and recalculating. I think we went started with 48 kilometers, but now the number is 40 kilometers, I saw. The tower is full with 40 kilometers of books. And they all have to leave the building for the restoration. So that's why we are so busy at the moment with moving and packing and preparing, because they already started with the underground repository. And you can see under the pond, there is a and who also makes the beautiful pictures that are on the website and that I've so already seen this morning. Uh, I'm able to show you what's going on with the tower. And you can see here, this is uh, digging. This is the inner garden. And you can't move within an inner garden, so they had to make a road under uh, the building. And the first car that arrived there was amazing to see a car driving through, but you see this was a pond and this poor lady statue had to, to leave as well. So here she is, and now she is on a small inner garden. You can see how the road was made, and here you can see what the garden looks like when it's all uh, well upside down. The windows of the large reading room are closed, although it's full with students because they have light from the roof and they stay there. Can't imagine I would do that, but they stay there and it's full and it's crowded. And so while they are digging the whole thing over here, you can see it here. Amazing that you can see the underground. Well, Sometimes there is sun in Ghent, as you can see, but not always. And here, this is the amazing part of the deep and the depth. And we are moving, and that means that everything has to move, also the statues. And I have some small statues in my office, but uh, believe me, uh, the moment when the young man came into my office with the ribbons and the numbers to hang around the statues, he was quicker outside of the room than he came in, because everything is moving and leaving the building now which is bright, which is great, which is renovation, but which is a bit sad also. Our uh, well inspection from one of the, uh, of the outside of the concrete that is falling apart, 
it looks like St. Nicholas, but it was a man hanging at the um, wall outside, just uh, controlling the concrete and seeing what fell down or what didn't fall down. And this is one of the book floors. You see progress, and you can also see that um, it's a firm that's working on it that um, likes uh, to classify and to keep everything in order, which is amazing. And here, this one means that the lower floors are already closed. And this is already the floor, so there are two floors under it. So we are already that far. And we are even that far that you can be uh, underground at the moment. So uh, it will take one more year uh, before the underground repository is ready. And then the whole collection will move into it. And we will move out of the library and uh, go further. And we hope that one day it will be as bright as it was in the 40s. This is a picture of the 50s with, well, a terrace on the outside on the roof. But uh, one day there was a hole in the roof. And so the university decided this was really some fantasy of the architect. So they uh, tore it down. And now we hope that we can reconstruct it again. For the Belgians in who are sitting here, doesn't this remind you of some other buildings in Leuven where Stefan Biel really got some interesting ideas about uh, Museum M and the white terrace on, on the roof, which is very, very similar to this one. So in a couple of years, when there is a new ELAG in Ghent, we will be in this library, I think. We hope to be finished at 2018. So uh, let's hope then for a new ELAG over there. And you can follow all this. Uh, there is in Boeken, Toren, Baublok, where we put uh, uh, here's pictures, uh, very well, not daily, but once, or twice, three times a week. And it's an open Facebook pa page where you can uh, look at. And there is an another brick in the wall, although this is not in bricks, but in concrete. And of course, this is not only a building, but inside the building, a lot is happening too. I'm extremely proud of a very hardworking and uh, fascinating uh, team that is doing uh, well everything to make it a better library in paper, but also everything to make it a better electronic library. So I'm very thankful that they all agreed to go for this uh, ELA conference and for the organization of it. So got one thing about the uh, library, you can visit the building today, or you can visit the faculty library uh, of arts and humanities. And um, the um, visits will start um, at 6.30 in the afternoon. And you should all be at the door of the book tower, which is uh, Rosir. Uh, it's easy to find, it's that direction. Take care, there is water in between, so you need a bridge to cross, so you can be on your way for a very long time if you go the wrong direction. But be there at uh, 6.30. And you have to register at a desk downstairs for the um, uh, visit, because only 40 people can uh, visit uh, Arts and Humanities, or 40 can visit uh, the Book Tower. And, well, it's an old building, you know. It has one elevator. And guess what? The elevator broke down. There are more than 300 and something steps. So if you want to visit the book tower, be in good condition. OK? And it's nice, you know. It's along the window, and uh, you can see the city coming. And it's worth doing it. And you can take your time to do that. So if you want some exercise at the end of the day, go for the visit of the book tower. So the team are the, uh, taking care of the digital library and uh, well, the whole team, we worked on our new mission and we agreed upon this in the whole network of libraries of the um, uh, university, uh, because it's not only the book tower, but also faculty libraries that are important, is that we go for facilitating open knowledge creation, because you all know that it's more than having a catalog or uh, books or whatever. It's the reuse of 
what we're taking care of. That's getting more and more important. And there are four um, focuses that we have, and that's sustainability, uh, literacy, the user-driven, uh, being user-driven especially, and the web strategy. And I think these four words, or these four focuses, are also what um, you talk about at the ELA conference. And now I'm extremely uh, curious of what Herbert uh, is going to talk about. And with a lot of pleasure, Herbert, the floor is yours. <laughs>